Hello students, welcome to a new mathematics program for grade 7. In today's program, we are going to talk about polygons. First of all, let's see what is a polygon. Polygons are two-dimensional shapes. They are made up of straight lines and the shape is closed. What is most important here is that to have a polygon, we need to have straight lines and the figure must be closed. In fact, polygon is a Greek word. Poly means many and gon means angle. Have a look at these three figures. The first one is a polygon, whereas the second and third are not polygons. The first one is called a polygon because we have straight lines and the figure is closed. Whereas in the second figure, you can see that there is a curve. Remember that to have a polygon, we need to have straight lines. So here, since we have a curve, it is not a polygon. In the third figure, you can see an open space. So it is not a polygon again, because polygon need to be closed. Now, if we have a polygon with all the sides and angles equal, we call it a regular polygon. As you can see on the diagram, all the sides are equal and the angles also are equal. If we have a polygon that does not have all sides and angles equal, it is called an irregular polygon. As you can see on the diagram, the sides are different and the angles also are of different sizes. So students, you have seen what is a polygon. A polygon needs to have all straight lines and the figure must be closed. A regular polygon must have all sides equal and the angles also. An irregular polygon is a polygon which has different sides and different angles. Now, think about the minimum number of lines required to have a polygon. Consider the following situation. If we have a straight line, of course it is not a polygon, it is only a straight line. I add another line, we have two straight lines, still it is not a polygon because it is open here. I need a third line to make it become a polygon. I can use four lines, of course straight lines, to have another polygon. I can use five lines, five straight lines. As such, I can use six lines, seven lines, etc. But the minimum number of lines required to draw a polygon is three. So you can see that we have different polygons. That is, polygons with different number of sides. Since we have different polygons, there must be different names for these polygons. For instance, a polygon with three sides is called a triangle. However, we have different types of triangles, namely equilateral triangle. An equilateral triangle consists of three equal sides and three equal angles. We have isosceles triangle. An isosceles triangle consists of two equal sides and two equal angles. Now you must know among the three angles what are the two equal angles. To know about it you just need to consider the two equal sides. 
The angle which is exactly opposite the equal sides are angles of the same sizes. As you can see on the diagram, the two angles A are just opposite the two equal sides. Then we have scalene triangle. A scalene triangle is a triangle where the three sides are different. Also, the three angles are of different sizes. Now, let's move on to polygons with four sides. A polygon with four sides is called a quadrilateral. Now, we have different types of quadrilaterals, namely square, rectangle, parallelogram, kite, rhombus, trapezium, and arrowhead. Now, let's have a look at these quadrilaterals one by one. First, this is called a square. A square has four equal sides and four angles of 90 degrees. This is called a rectangle. A rectangle consists of two pairs of equal sides and four angles of 90 degrees. This figure is called a parallelogram. A parallelogram consists of two pairs of parallel sides and two pairs of equal sides. In a parallelogram, we have two pairs of parallel sides and also two pairs of equal sides. We also have two pairs of equal sides angles. The angles that are opposite to each other are equal. On the diagram here, the two angles A are equal and the two angles B are equal. This figure is called a rhombus. A rhombus is none other than a parallelogram with four equal sides. Since a rhombus is a parallelogram, it retains the characteristics of the parallelogram, that is, two pairs of parallel sides and two pairs of opposite angles. Again, the angles A are equal and the angles B are equal. This is a trapezium where we have one pair of parallel sides. This is a kite. In a kite, we have two diagonals. The two diagonals meet perpendicularly. In a kite, we have two pairs of equal sides and one pair of equal angles. This figure is an arrowhead. Again here, we have two pairs of equal sides. Let's move on to polygons with five sides. A polygon with five sides is called a pentagon. This is the figure of a pentagon. If all the sides and angles of the pentagon are equal, we call it a regular pentagon. As here, all the sides are equal and the angles. Now, let's move on to polygons with six sides. A polygon with six sides is called a hexagon. This is the figure of a hexagon. If all the sides and angles are equal, we call it a regular hexagon. Here, the angles are equal and the sides. A polygon with seven sides is called a heptagon. Here is a heptagon. Again, if all the sides and angles are equal, 
we have a regular heptagon. A polygon with eight sides is called an octagon. This is an octagon. A regular octagon has all its sides and angles equal. You can see here all the sides and angles are equal. A nonagon is a polygon having nine sides. Here you can see a polygon with nine sides. Again, if all the sides and angles are equal, we call it a regular nonagon. A polygon with ten sides is called a decagon. Here is a decagon. So students, can you tell me how do we call a decagon with all the sides and angles equal? Yes, a regular decagon. A regular decagon has all its sides and angles equal. You can see here the angles and sides are equal. Now, what about a polygon with 11 sides? A polygon with 12 sides. Well, students, at grade 7 level, you're going to work with polygons having up to 10 sides. In higher classes, you're going to work with polygons with more than 10 sides. But if you want to know more about the name of the polygons, you can consult the following website where you will know more about the polygons and number of sides. Students, so far we have worked with number of sides. Now, let's work with angles. More precisely, interior angles of polygons. The angles that are found inside a polygon are called interior angles. As you can see in the two figures here, all the angles that are found inside the polygon are called interior angles. Let's have a look at interior angles of a triangle. Working with interior angles of triangles, first consider the following triangle. If we cut it into three parts, then place the angles next to each other, as you can see on the diagram. If we place the three angles next to each other, we have a straight angle. You know that a straight angle is 180 degrees. So if we add angle A plus angle B plus angle C, we have 180 degrees. The sum of the interior angles of the triangle is 180 degrees. Let's have some examples on using the sum of interior angles of a triangle. The first example, we have a triangle here where two angles are known and one is unknown. To calculate this unknown angle, we must use the sum of the three, which is 180 degrees. So x degree plus 60 degrees plus 40 degrees is equal to 180 degrees. Adding 60 degrees to 40 degrees, we have x degrees plus 100 degrees is equal to 180 degrees. So x degrees equal to 180 degrees minus 100 degrees, we have 
an answer of x degrees is equal to 80 degrees. Have a look at the second example. In this example also, there is one unknown angle which is to be calculated. We have one angle of 60 degrees, one 90 degrees, and one x degrees. Again, if we add the three, we have 180 degrees. Adding 60 degrees to 90 degrees, we have 150 degrees. So to obtain x degrees, we need to subtract 150 degrees from 180 degrees to have an answer of x degrees is equal to 30 degrees. Now let's move on to sum of interior angles of quadrilaterals. First, have a look at this quadrilateral. If we cut the four angles and place them next to each other, we are going to have a complete turn. As you can see on the diagram, the four angles make one complete turn, which is 360 degrees. In other words, if I add angle number one with angle number two, with angle number three, together with angle number four, we are going to have 360 degrees. So the sum of interior angles of a quadrilateral is 360 degrees. Now let's see some examples where we are going to use sum of interior angles of a quadrilateral. Example one, find the unknown angle in this quadrilateral. Three of the angles are 90, 115, 85. The fourth one is Z degrees. So Z degrees plus 90 degrees plus 115 degrees plus 85 degrees is equal to 360 degrees. If we add 90 degrees with 115 degrees with 85 degrees, we have Z degrees plus 290 degrees is equal to 360 degrees. To obtain Z degrees, we have to subtract 290 degrees from 360 degrees to have an answer of Z degrees is equal to 70 degrees. Let's move on to another example. Here also we need to find the unknown angle A. Again, adding the four angles, we have 360 degrees. Here, A degrees plus 248 degrees equal to 360 degrees. So the answer for A degrees is A degrees is equal to 360 degrees minus 248 degrees. The answer is 112 degrees. Now, I'm giving you some examples for practice. In each of the following cases, you need to find the unknown angle. Of course, if you are having some difficulties, you can seek the help of your teachers or parents. Students, now let's have a look of what we have learned in today's program. Today we have learned what is a polygon, name of polygons with number of sides, interior angles of triangles and quadrilaterals, and finally, finding unknown angles in triangles and quadrilaterals. Students, our program ends here. Hope to see you again in the next program. Till then, goodbye.